March is a month of change and development. Between Women's History Month, Extreme Test Day, Truman's fundraising, and Christmas hope to change things around the building, March is starting out strong and hopeful. Years women have been put on the back burner when it comes to recognizing their achievements. From suffragettes to the modern feminists, women have been fighting for the right to be seen as equal to the men around them. Women have gone from only being able to take care of a child to taking care of entire countries. And even now, they work hard for the recognition that they deserve just like the women before them. Who's your favorite woman from history? My favorite woman from history is Susan B. Anthony. Um, my favorite woman from history is uh, Joan of Arc. I would say that my favorite woman, woman in history is probably Marilyn Monroe. See, the fact that I'm stumped on this question just shows that like uh, we haven't been taught enough about women in history. Alice Roosevelt, daughter of Teddy Roosevelt. She's really cool. Eileen, I think, or Aileen uh, Warsaw, was she killed seven men, all of which were abusers. How do you feel about the lack of women in historical records? Um, I think it, like, we don't get enough. Um, what do you think about how far we've come as a society when it comes to acknowledging the women who raised it? I think we've definitely grown, but I think there's still more growth to come. I feel like we talk about it a lot more than we did before, and we try to, we have like women's history classes and stuff like that, but in general classes, I feel like we don't speak about it enough, and it would be really beneficial if we had more representation. I don't think we've come far enough. I think that we need to go further in teaching about women's history, and I think that we need to go further in acknowledging it. I think there should be more acknowledgement about it. I think we're doing a lot better. There's still a lot more we could do to like fix that. But as of right now, we're on a steady slope upwards. What are some things you've noticed about the women in history we do learn about? They do. They just help the country. They do all this, but it's never to like help women's rights or help equal women and men. I feel like we do a pretty good job. Maybe a little more in like Susan B. Anthony, and people like that. How do you feel about the lack of women in historical records? Um, it really saddens me that we don't have a lot more representation and we don't get a lot of uh, examples of women that we can look up to, especially in like school and stuff. Are there any women from history you think school should be teaching us about? Um, I don't have any specific names, but I think women of color, maybe LGBT women, people who really fought to like create a better world would be really nice to like hear about and learn about. When learning about history, have you ever noticed the lack of women? Yes, um, in class and stuff, we don't have a lot of examples of women history. This could be because they weren't as documented and stuff, so it could be hard for them. Yes. I have. I feel like the only names that you really hear in a history class are names of men, unless the history teacher has specifically designed it a different way to be more inclusive. When learning about history, have you ever noticed the lack of women? Yes. There there, a lot of the times, they're not um, the women that are being acknowledged are just the women that um, they're doing something, but it's only for the good of the country and not for like women in general. Um, we learn how impressive what they do really is, and how it's pretty much the same as like what a man can do. They just do the same thing, and it's just. What they do is just really great, and we didn't know about it until now because women were deemed inferior. Um, what the last person said with learning about them who just helped the U.S. Um, government or helped uh, create the country and stuff, like we don't focus on them as people or the struggles they went through or things like that. Can you tell us more about Joan of Arc? Um, she fought to uh, create... Um, Equal or not equality. She fought to um, work for a better world for herself, but despite like the um, backlash from the church and not allowing to be a soldier and stuff because she was a woman. Alrighty, thank you. Um, I think that a lot of the things we learn about women in history are like subbed to a male. You know, like when we learn about a woman in history, a lot of the things that we're learning about is like what she did for like this man or what she did in a campaign for a man. We don't really just hear about individual wo women unless it's like they're a part of a bigger story. How do you feel about the lack of women in historical records? Um, I wish there was more. I feel like 
a lot of the time women accomplishments aren't really talked about. Um, and it's kind of like, I think that a lot of the time that, sorry, <laughs> I think a lot of the time accomplishments for women are, you only see them in media and news that presents itself for minorities, but it's not really just something that's talked about in general, and I think it should be more normalized to be talked about, and it shouldn't be something that's brought up, you know, to defend a claim. Like, pretty much we know uh, Henry VIII had uh, six wives, and uh, that's all you really get to know about them unless you dig a little deeper on your own. Um, you know, there are a couple women that like pop up. Like, I feel like the biggest woman that you get taught about in school is Rosa Parks. Um, and they don't even tell you her full story. They literally just tell you one day she sat on a bus. They didn't tell you how she was a part of a much bigger movement. Um, that they really had to fight to get uh, what they needed said said. Um, it makes sense because very male dominated society, but I would like to see more women. I think in the last couple years there's been a lot of work, but it's kind of being reversed. What famous women do you know that are from Missouri? Laura Ingalls Wilder, who is a writer for Little House on the Prairie. Who is your favorite woman or women from any women from history that you think the school should be teaching us about? Um, I'm not sure. There's like so many women that don't get talked about at all and I find that to be a problem because they are just overcome by their male counterparts and I feel like there's too many women that should be talked about to just name one. As we get further into the semester, more and more tests are starting to come up and March 12th is no different. This Tuesday, otherwise known as Extreme Test Day, is a day reserved for grades 10 and up to take the ACT. Meanwhile, freshmen will be visiting colleges, and although seniors have this option too, they also have the option to retake the ACT for a better score. No matter what they choose, students in the ISD will be busy either testing their knowledge with the ACT or planning out their futures by visiting colleges. The time for digging for dollars, Truman High School's annual fundraiser for cancer research and awareness, has nearly arrived. Contrary to what one may think, digging, in the case of the fundraiser, doesn't refer to an act that one may partake in with a shovel. Instead, digging refers to a defensive volleyball move, indicative of the fundraiser's main event, an intra-school volleyball tournament. We caught up with Truman students, including those involved in organization and planning, to hear their opinions on the upcoming event. Okay, so Digging for Dollars is an event that we do, we host every year, and basically it is a volleyball tournament, and you can sign up with the team, and all the proceeds basically go to the American Cancer Society just for cancer research, and that's kind of goes with the significance of it. It's raising money to help cancer patients and cancer research, so overall the event is just super fun and just a nice way to raise money for cancer. Have there been any challenges in planning the event? Um, there have. I'd say the biggest challenge is kind of... Um, getting a good outreach to the students. You know, not a lot of people play volleyball or not, like, we will try to blast it on social media, but I think the hardest part is just kind of getting people to sign up because either people haven't played or they don't know the rules or just getting a team together. And that's probably the hardest part, I'd say. What would you say to somebody who's hesitant about actually playing but wants to help out? Um, definitely come and support. We definitely have an option where you can come and watch the event, and I believe it's five bucks to come and watch, but I definitely say play. It's so much fun. Like, I did the, um, dodgeball tournament that helped raise money. Super fun. Get a team together, play. I don't care how good you are, or, like, if you've never played before, it's so much fun. Here in a couple weeks, actually, they should be sending out a Google form in your email, and you should be able to pick a team, or if you don't have a team, you can just keep the the um, date of the event in mind so that way you can come and support and watch the tournament. It's actually really funny to watch so I would really encourage you. This year William Christman's leadership team has begun working on projects that they hope to change around the school. Here is William Christman's leadership class to discuss what is Make Christman Better. Make Christman Better projects are projects that the leadership class um, students put together. They worked in groups to uh, um, figure out something in the school that they felt like they could make better. Not so much saying that things are wrong or messed up or wrong at Christmas, but something that they could make better. Um, so they decided on first what the problem is, what the thing they want to make better, and then they designed an entire project around that um, 
to fix it. So it could have been an array of things um, from making a mural on a wall to changing something about the bathroom, some all types of stuff. Our main Christian Better project is putting like decorative vinyls on some of the walls to make Christmas pop more. Kira Abelnop, Maxwell Goldner, and um, myself, we're doing hey, an outdoor classroom is what we're promoting for. The 20th, by the way. An outdoor classroom here at Christman. Um, location undecided and everything, but that's what we're working towards. So our Make Christmas Better project is exactly to renovate the bathrooms. We're getting hooks in all of the bathrooms as well as full-length mirrors in all of them. Our Make Christmas Better project is getting more of the high stands and the high tables in the atrium. Why did you guys pick this as your Make Christmas Better project? Because we've been able to tell when we're in the atrium that kids really love them and chairs are always being stolen so we think if we get more and maybe longer ones then everyone will have a place to sit and tables that they like. It can bring people together because if you're able to set a larger group then and you get to interact with your friends more because for some people, like me, I have friends where the only time I'm going to see them and interact with them is lunch, which gives you the opportunity to be able to just connect more. Because we know other schools already have them, already utilize them, use them, have built them in the past, you know, but Christman has never looked into something like that before and we have so much space and so many teachers and students who want something like that and that's an awesome opportunity so we wanted to do something big and just go for as big as we can without um, going, you know being too crazy or like knowing that we possibly couldn't get it approved. It means growth like it means that the students next year have something to look forward to it means that we get to leave a legacy behind you know something to be remembered by um, to me it just means that like there's always going to be a future of Christmas, no matter where I am in my life and like how long I've been gone. It gives like a sense of like, I don't know, it's like warming to my heart. You know what I mean? Like it's cute to know that for years and years, um, students might be able to use our outdoor classroom and be like, the class of 2024 worked on this for us and like did this for blah, 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 and now we get to use it every day. Um, so that's something I think that's awesome with all of our projects is that like it'll be remembered forever and it'll be like, our mark on the school for whenever we were here, you know? And it can always, it'll help. It'll help for years to come, all the projects, like the bathrooms and like the murals will always be seen, you know? So I think it's like a, a good like moment in the school's history to be remembered of. We see kids being interactive within their school. Um, it makes it a better place around here. It makes it um, uh, more ownership with the students when they see other kids doing these things and um, taking pride in their school, then that um, passion and that um, positivity passes on to the rest of the student body too. And then it changes the culture around here and makes it a more positive place. Even after all the events in March have passed, there's still many things to come our way.